Woo! Dead rat smells. Ah. Budget paint job on it. Now we're down and out. 10 times lighter. Come on in. Sweaty. Electricity. So repetitive. That's not good. Ow. 29 bucks. 45 bucks. Hold on, dear. Catch your cornbread. It just broke. Shopping cart here. Not touch Bondo. Could not help myself. Budget cuts and improvise. Keep putting it in. High five. Golly, bud! Gross. The Mona Lisa. <laughs> Back to body work. Good enough. Fan hog. Digging a pond? You might get a good job. Let's see if this blows up in my face. A gangster lean. We don't even know. I wasted the money. Stop it. Grab it. Grab it. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Looks beautiful. You drip sweating. Look at them ears. Oh, tractor paint. Woo! Ain't nobody got time for that. Boom! Epic. Yeah, I don't trump my foot. Look at you. Great today. Wow. No milk in that. He's got your phone. Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. If you've been watching us a while, you already know what car this is. This is our 78 AMC Gremlin that we actually drove quite a ways to buy, for me at least, three hours. No engine, no transmission, no nothing, but this is our burnout car. Now, last year we competed in the Cleason Cars Burnout Competition at Bristol and Bradenton in our 81 Malibu, and let's just be honest, it didn't go so well, okay? Hit the wall both times, broke two rods, knocked the oil pump off the engine, put her through the block. I mean, it wasn't good, okay? We were working with a bone stock 350 Chevy is all we had. We just made it work with what we had. So this car, we were wanting to build a purpose-built burnout car. My plan was to show you guys the engine build video first, but there's been some delays trying to get the machine work done. We don't have a lot of time until the Cletus and Cars burnout event at Bristol. We actually only have like two weeks until the event. So we're gonna try to build this car from the ground up in about two weeks. We've got to get on this. We can't wait any longer for the parts to get here. We're gonna work with what parts we got. And we're gonna put some safety stuff in it, get brakes working on it, and get it ready for the engine install. And we're also gonna paint it. Woo! Kids are really excited about painting it. I think they're gonna do a lot of the work on that. So let's get right into it and do what we can do. Try to get this thing done in time. Woo! Pretty solid old car. It was originally a four cylinder, four speed car. Amen. But look at all the room in here. I mean, all kinds of room. It's a manual brake car, which I like, manual steering. I think I'm gonna start tearing in the brakes and maybe see if we have enough room for a radiator that I ordered for it. We've ordered a bunch of parts. I had to make some big expensive orders on this thing. I guess we need to get the stuff out of the inside. Why don't y'all work on that? Cause I know the seat's not even mounted, is it? No. Not at all. I guess you can start sanding on the car after that. Let's get to it. I don't think that's the original seat there. I don't think it is either. Oh, we left our battery charger in here. That's where that thing was. You gonna fit in that thing? No, it's disgusting. Shoot. And it smells terrible. It came with a lot of spare yeah, parts and stuff in there. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff in there. Probably should have sprayed this down a long time ago, I guess. Now the only thing we're gonna do here is put front brakes on it. So with a burnout car, there's no need for rear brakes. It just causes problems for you. So we've got brand new calipers and hoses and we've got an aftermarket master cylinder that only has a single reservoir. Because we don't need dual reservoirs, we're not even doing rear brakes. This thing's gonna be so cool with a rowdy V8. Oh, we have a drive shaft. That's a good start. So somebody's already removed the passenger side, caliper and hose, so. One last thing I gotta do. Right back, Ralphie. Uh, totally. I don't need to look for door latches because this door doesn't have latch on it. Is it gonna break loose, you think? Oh yeah. Probably has the wrong fittings on it, I would say, for what we're wanting to do, but that's not a huge deal. A lot of times these OEM lines, they have way bigger fittings than like an aftermarket. Really? The line will be the same size, but the nut is way bigger a lot of times than these. Ow. I think we got it all. We got spares of a lot of things here. 
We actually even have a different front balance. And I remember from when we posted the video months ago, a lot of guys were saying the front end's not correct for the year or something. I, well, I know the front end's blue. Hey, that's what we really need right there. There's our door latch. So hopefully that's the passenger door latch because that door doesn't latch at all. That'd be good. But it looks like we have a lot of spare parts here that are gonna come in handy. Oh! Well, that's the best little back seat, isn't it? Yeah, it's so short. Don't smell of this at all. It smells pretty bad in here, don't it? Yep. I'm gonna get all little nuts and bolts and springs out of here. Not much down there, huh? No. I can't place this smell, but it's awful. Dead rat smells what it smells like. Almost a chemical smell to me. I don't know. It doesn't smell good at all. Ralph is going to pull our insulation up here because we don't need that where we're going, do we, Ralph? No. That's just going to be Look, in the way. Look at that. Look at that. Beauty. Pristine. Hey, it actually has seatbelt still in it, doesn't it? We're planning on putting a racing seat and five-point harness since I seem to be hitting the wall over and over again. Ralph, I like your get-up today. It looks good on you, bud. That's a good look. I'm gonna vacuum this. Look how solid that is, though. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. Did it get her cleaned up? Yeah, smells better. Please be the right part. Oh, look at that. Perfect. It's good to have a door that'll actually shut. We don't need a door slinging open when I we're trying to spin around. Is that fun? Yes. I guess they just took it out because they're going to paint because they took all the weather strips out and everything. We are building the rowdiest engine I've ever built for this thing. That's what we bought parts for at least. Okay. That didn't work, did it? Oh, striker's not in there. There's nothing for it to latch to. Okay. Is that positive? Yeah, let's go find that before we bust the glass out of this thing. I don't see anything here. Is this it? Ooh. There we go. That's exactly what we need. Especially with a car like an AMC, you need these kind of parts because you can't find them nowhere else. It's like a big plate in there that slides in a track that it can't fall out of. Once you get it screwed into there, it allows you to adjust your door up, down, in, or out. It doesn't line up with your quarter panel or your body lines. So that's why that's got so much adjustability to it. So here's our problem. It is hitting the thick part here when it's actually supposed to latch on this part. You see how it's intersecting there? So we actually need to space it this way. If you notice, the other side had a bunch of washers behind it. Yeah. We're gonna put some washers behind this one. So while I'm adjusting on that, they want to get started on the outside, sand this thing, get it ready to paint. Now, don't be expecting that we're gonna do some top-notch show paint job on this thing because we're gonna kind of do a little budget paint job on it. With our budget helpers. We don't even know what color we're gonna paint yet. What's the plan? Blue. I don't know. I don't care. It's blue. I know these cars were used in some movies, so we might look into some of the movie cars. I know, like, the movie cars, yeah. there's one in that. So we may look into some of the movies that had these cars and maybe match one of those paint jobs. But I think the one in the cars had, like, a cool stripe going yeah. down the side and up over the roof. So we might want to do a cool stripe or something, but we'll figure it out. Anything's got to look better than what this thing looks like right now. So they're going to start sanding it with some 320. Good rule of thumb is if you're repainting something, usually you've got to sand it with at least 320 to 400 grit in order for the sand scratches to not be there when you paint it. If you sand something like this of 180 and then you paint it with modern paint, you're going to see all those scratches. So you need at least 320 grit to 400 grit before you paint. They're going to sand it with that. I don't know if we're going to have time to do any of the actual body work like fixing dents. For now, we may have to spray over some of that. I don't know. Depends on how much time we have. One thing y'all can do is go ahead and take the scraper and take the body side body off, get the duct tape off, stuff like that. All right, get to it, guys. You'll figure it out. Ow. Oh, oh my lord. What? Oh, okay. I remember that, that fender was flopping in the wind on the way home. Uh huh. Watch out. If you were wanting to save a molding like this, 
I see some people take them off where they pull straight at them, like at a 90 degree angle. A lot of times these things have metal on the inside of them. This one obviously survived well. We're not gonna reuse it anyway. Keep some pressure on it and try to pull it off at a really slight angle. You don't want to bend it like 90 degrees. So most of the time you want to stand in kind of an X pattern, okay? On these edges, you want to like roll over it. You don't want to like do anything crazy or you're gonna cut right through it really quickly. And we're just wanting to take all the shine off of it because if there's shine, your sandpaper hasn't really done its job. So we want to get all the shine off of it. This right here. You can use like a DA, like a dual action sander a lot of times. It'll really speed the process up. We may get to that in this video. Don't ever put duct tape on a paint job, guys. Most of the time, it leaves like a terrible residue on it. It's hard to get off. So the two things you want to look at when you're adjusting a striker like this is the in and out distance right, especially right where the striker's at. The door is sitting in on the quarter panel, so that striker needs to come out a little bit. The other place you need to look is at your body lines. Look right here. You see how the door is too high? So that striker needs to go down and it needs to come out just a little bit to be adjusted right. Sometimes it's a little tricky to keep up where it was. You don't want to loosen it a ton so it doesn't move a lot. We're gonna go down and a little bit out. Now we're down and out. I put two big washers under there to get it spaced out in the right spot. Let's we'll see what that looks like. Well, the in and out is really good now. Look at that. That's where it needs to be. The door is still a touch too high. So I'm gonna lower it down just a little bit more and we should be right where we need to be. It's a lot smoother now. This side's been primer before. Look at that. There you go. I just gotta find the rods so maybe we can hook up the outside door handle, but that's a whole lot better than what we had. She's such a booger picker. She <laughs> literally can't help it. I can't help it. She's just in here digging at this. She loves getting stuff like that. Look at that. Everything. Look at that. Look at that big old piece. Oh, look at you go. Well, at least it's little. It won't take a whole lot of paint. So I think the car was factory gray, it looks like, with blue interior, but this is not a factory fender and or door on this car. I believe it's got a different front end than what it came with from the factory. Cause this is also, was originally a blue fender. Hey, as much as you like to paint, you need to be over here working. Mm -mm. So these master cylinder bolts come in this way, right there. A lot of times they just have two bolts. This has four. I forgot to take the push rod loose, so. This actually has a bolt-in pin. Usually they have like a funky clip that's really hard to get on or off, but I actually like how this one bolts in. We got a little drain hole in the floor, but that's just to get the sweat out of your boot, you know? Mm. I don't know how I got this dirty. <laughs> hey. You always get dirty. Here's our old master cylinder. We'll probably reuse the push rod part, but I'm not planning on reusing that master cylinder. So here's what we're going to replace it with. It's an aluminum master cylinder. This is the same kind of master cylinder I ran on the Starlet. It's a three quarter inch bore. I usually tend to go smaller on the bore diameter because I've had bad luck before. If you go with like whatever, like I say an inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter bore. The bigger the bore, the harder your pedal is gonna be. So I usually run a smaller bore. I like the feel of the pedal being a little softer. That's why we got this. It's just got a simple single line hookup. On the Malibu, we tried to run one like this with uh, just front brakes. And we plugged one of them and it seemed like it built up pressure back against that plug and would not allow the master cylinder to push down as far as it needed to because we really had brake problems with that Malibu. That's why I went with this. Since this bolts in up and down like this, which I really wish it bolted side to side like I'm used to, it kind of puts it in the wrong spot, you know, to get a bolt in there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to measure out what the center of these are and drill some holes in the firewall to mount this thing. Looks like it's 2.25, so two and a quarter inches center to center. And there is like a huge weight difference in those. Still those, Ralphie. How many pounds that weigh? 10. Okay, what's that weigh? Less than one. Come on, see, you heard it here first. 10 times lighter. I'm gonna go ahead and get this hood out of our way. Honestly, it's probably not gonna have a hood after the engine I'm putting in it. You didn't tell me I was holding it. Well, you should have known, girl. Be easy on it. Probably not too many of these left, huh? 
I'm using the caliper to mark where it goes. We're gonna have just enough meat to get those two bolts in there, it looks like. But that's gonna have to be tomorrow because school's back in session. Ah! And we're kind of limited on when we can work. There's a lot of school things going on right now. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Merchandise is now exclusively available at thesleeperdude.com. We got sizes from you small all the way up to 5X and stickers with free shipping. Go check it out, thesleeperdude.com. Thanks for all your support. Baby! Not you, Rocky Jr. Where's my baby at? There he is. Come on. Hi, love. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Are you hungry? Hmm? My goodness. The next day, we're back. So we got some more sand to do and some more breaks to do. Let's get to it. Go. He really took that literally. <laughs> He's a good little sander. I didn't know how good a sander is going to oh. be. One thing the kids have ran into here that is a good example of things you need to look for when you're getting one ready to paint. You see these runs here? Yeah. You can feel them. So if you sand like an X pattern and keep your block flat, eventually you can sand those runs out of it because this is in the primer. Because you don't want runs like that showing up underneath your paint or it'll, you know, look terrible. Which we know this car ain't going to look perfect, but we're going to make it good, look as good as we can for the time we got. See how that run's kind of disappearing there? It doesn't look like that anymore. So it's starting to get where you can't feel it. So that's what you need to do right there. Talk about being on a time crunch with this. I don't have an air compressor plumbed and hooked up. I don't currently own a paint mm -hmm. gun because it's been so long since I've used one. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the paint, but we'll get there. You think that's about right, Squeezel? Sure. Squeezy approved, that's all I need to know. We barely had enough metal for that. We'll put a washer behind it. So Wawa's decided to start sanding on the roof because it's completely rust. So she's using some 80 grit there because she's just basically sanding metal. There's no paint, there's no nothing. We're gonna have to primer that for sure before we put some paint on it. So I got most of the runs out, or all of them basically. That's smooth now. We don't talk about that. Sweaty. Oddly enough, this master cylinder did not come with the other half of this push rod. And it looks like in the instructions, it doesn't come with that. I don't know why that would be. So I guess I'm gonna have to cut this one off and either weld it to it or bolt it together somehow to make it work. But before I pull it out of here, cause it's like pressed in there, I need to get a measurement on how long this actually is to copy it with that one. Looks like that's six and five eighths of an inch to the center of that hole. That's what we need to make this one do. Uh, she's looking for them shortcuts, isn't she? Absolutely. <laughs> we ain't got no air, but we got electricity. Right, we get her. Okay, well, that'll speed it up, Wall. We use them on the house when we remodel our last house. Yeah, she'll figure it out. Ralphie's working on some of our little rusty edges, trying to get them feathered out. This is hard for me because I worked in a body shop for so long, I'm not used to doing it the quick and cheap way at all. I turned the twin turbo fan on, Ellie took first place immediately in front of it. She is super spoiled. It is super hot out here, guys. So my math says we need two and three eighths of this factory push rod added to that one in order for it to be the right length. So right there should be the place to cut it. So I think I have a genius plan here I've never used before. I have a cheap socket here <laughs> that's not in one of my complete sets. It is a half inch, so it fits that nut. So if I welded this to here, I could screw this on and off. It would be adjustable and it would be the right length. This might be your finest invention right here. I know. That is some of my best work ever right there. Oh, oh. salute. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, we lost Stanley, but it was for a good cause. This should go right in and be the right distance for this. You got it held, Ralphie? Yep. So there we go. That ought to work perfectly right there if I got everything right on our distance. We'll have to get all our stuff in before we try it though. 
looks like best I can tell, we're only gonna have to put a new end on the line that goes from here to here, or I may just make a whole new one, one of the two. That's for the rear, so we, we won't even be using them anymore. Mm. Here we go. While I was in here, I noticed somebody has clean cut the motor mounts off of here and these mounts too, so somebody must have had hog leg plans. That's all I know. Totally. Slobbering on me. So my brake line only needs to be about five inches wide. I just decided to go ahead and make a new one. That one's kind of bent completely wrong for what I needed. You guys have probably seen me make brake lines a million times, but I can show you the basics of it if you'd like. Yes, yeah. let's see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you take your brake line cutting tool, which is just a really sharp pizza cutter, basically. Run around there a few times, tighten it up, run around there again. So you go around there enough and it cuts it off like that right there. 100% make sure you put your tube nut on there or you did everything in vain. By the way, this is a brake line my wife told me to throw away when we moved and now I'm using it. Oh my gosh, you have to bring that up, don't mm -hmm. you? You little hoarder, you. So you take this tool here, which this all comes in a kit if you go to buy at the store. I just assume people know things like this sometimes. You put it in there and get it even with this tool right here, which is made for the 316th brake line. So when it's pretty much flush with the top, Tighten it down on the side that has the tapered spot there in it. You put this little die here in there and smash this thing down flat. So after you smash it down flat like that, back it off, take the die out, and then do it again. It goes right back in there, and this is what actually makes your flare angle that seals up against your fitting. And then you're done. This is so repetitive. I feel like I've done this one, this one door panel like four times. I think we shiny. have. We have. So if I got everything right, this should screw in here and screw in there and we should have lines to do our brakes. There you go. While I was using the eraser wheel to get the rest of the residue, that double side tape off here, cause you don't really want to paint over that. We gotta get the front hoops off this thing now, see what our brake situation is. I'm hoping we can reuse our rotors. That would be helpful. Oh, hmm. uh, it's got them little chrome caps on it. I hate those. We're gonna have to probably get new lug nuts for it. You can hear the difference in them when they hit the ground. They're so junky. Once that gets off there, the size is different and like nothing fits it. I don't think those are factory hoops for this thing. I wouldn't think they would look like that. Usually cars this old had solid hoops, but maybe they are. Let me know in the comments. I'm not an AMC nut, so I'm not sure. I'm not seeing any stampings on it. What's our rotor look like? Ooh, groove like crazy. That's not good. Oh, wow, oh, looks like I've been driving that thing. It does. All right, let's go look at the other side. Probably gotta order something. We got plenty of grass in there. We need Rocky in here to eat that. Ooh, look how far out of alignment this thing was. Mm. Yeah, look at that rotor. See, they've already took the caliper off. So we need brake pads and rotors. Ooh. Wow. They packed all Jeff that one, didn't they? Yeah. Hi, Rocky. You did an amazing job. He's been saying in a way for two days now. I know it doesn't seem like it's been two days. And you come out here and video for four hours in a day or something, it ends up being five minutes of video, you know? So it looks like it has this slider here and this one Allen wrench bolt, and that's all that holds it on. I don't know that we have that other one. Mm. I hope the new calipers come with something. I want to make sure these calipers are right so I know I don't have to order anything else. Because there was a couple different options with the brakes, and we were kind of guessing at it. So that's all that holds it in there. I just opened up our caliper and it actually comes with the wedge and the bolt and everything. Well, it even comes with a new washer and bolt there. Looks to be the correct one. Well, I called all the parts stores in town. They can't even order those rotors. What? And I checked on Wrong Auto. They don't even offer rotors for this thing. So I'm gonna have to get online and see if there's any magic can happen on getting rotors. Those are not turnable, just I know they're not turnable, they're too bad. We may have to run them just because we can't get anything right now. So that's the end of day two. Woo! We will see you guys tomorrow. <coughs> All right, early the next morning, we came out to town. We're gonna try to get a paint gun. Before you blow me up in the comments, I used to own a paint gun. I think I've still got it somewhere, maybe. I painted for years and primer cars for 20 years. I did have my own gun when I was a painter, but the thing eventually started messing up on me. I haven't had the need for one in a long time. So we're gonna go get a cheap one from Harbor Freight and we're gonna go see if we can get some paint and primer for a tractor and make this thing look decent. She'll be at the solar lots in no time. You know how she... Oh, uh, I knew it, I knew it. 
So they got this bad boy for 29 bucks, but I've been down that road once before and had terrible results. I'm gonna get their best one they got here. $149 on sale. We'll see how it works. Maybe this one last a while for us. We plan on painting more things. Once again, not a good idea to take your wife to Rule King, guys. It's the best idea. Was it this? Hobby Lobby Lowe's. Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply. 43 cents for flip flops. We might have us a little flop. Huh? They don't have the bottle opener like mine, though, do they? Uh -uh. Told you. No, we're not spray painting it. We gotta do a little better than that. Town and country, that's us right there. Now what color are we gonna pick? So they got red. Yellow. And they got orange, right? Kubota orange. Oh, that would be really bright, Kubota orange. 45 bucks, paint your whole car. We're going with the orange paint scheme. We'll see what it looks like. Here's the reducer, Ralphie. It's supposed to have a hardwood. You see the hardwood? What trash are they selling here? What is this? What around? Well, they don't have any of the hardener. We'll see what we can find. Maybe we have something that'll work or maybe we can get something somewhere else. $45 paint job, here we come. Come on, Ford, that's not a Mustang. It's like a soccer mom's yeah, car. Yeah, I don't know why they named that a Mustang. Hold on, dear. <laughs> I actually broke down a little bit and I bought some Bondo. So, I told you we wouldn't yeah. be doing all the stuff at this I know. Bar. Well, I figure, we I figure there's going to be time for them to work on it while I'm doing other things. Maybe they could put some Bondo on and figure it out they've never done Bondo. I just can't help it. We just need to work on that. And y'all love it. You'll just love it when you get to playing with it. Question is, where's Ralphie? He's fishing with Frank today. He has been fishing every day before we come down here. If there's any downtime and we're doing something else, he just slinks out down to the pond now. Yeah. See what you do when you hang out with the wrong people, you just slink out. Exactly. Have you caught anything? No. Lost. I don't count. You got a big one right there. What? Big lump of moss. You look country and cornbread. Are you really getting the pen out? Oh yeah, I can't help it. Ooh, look at that right there, Ralph. Oh Lord. That's a whopper doodle. It hurts me to try to paint over things like this. This yeah. is high. That's why it's sanded the metal. This is low and this is high. This door and fender are pretty good here. Pretty decent size dents right there. We got some holes under the tail light here, which really need to be patched up, but we don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. This is pretty lumpy. We got some rust holes here as well. It's really not terrible though. The quarters are probably the worst thing of the whole deal. So we just got this at O'Reilly's. I don't know, I might could have got a better product at like a paint store, but I didn't want to spend paint store money on it. You smell it? I didn't used to be able to smell it, but I can smell it now. <laughs> That's funny. So when you're doing a dent like this, you don't want to use a fine grit. So like 80 grit is usually the preferred method. Maybe 180. Make sure there's no high spots. If there are, you need to tap them down. And then this stuff, you really don't want to stir this stuff. You really want to like fold it if you're going to mix it at all. Because if you stir it, you get air bubbles in it. And we don't want air bubbles because then you have pinholes and pinholes show up. While he's working on that, I'm going to push this one out with a pry bar. It's kind of our worst dent. It's right in the front. I hate how it looks with a big dent in it right here. It just broke. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even like hammer in. I'm glad we're doing this a little bit because I just couldn't live myself not doing this. Eleanor's wondering why the fan's not on. Yeah. So you want to push them out as best you can. You want as little bondo as possible. That's feeling a lot better. See that high spot, Ralphie? And a lot of times tapping around something like this while you're pushing out on the low spot will help it go out easier. If you take a stud gun, you can get it out even farther. Hey, look how thin those are. They're all the way down to the rivets. That's all the way down to the metal. There is no pad left on that one. So the back side feels good. The front side is groove like crazy. I tried again today, went to the parts store. He ordered in a Ford Ranger rotor because it's the same diameter and same lug pattern. We're gonna take this to him and see if that matches up. 
really skeptical because the spacing's gonna have to be right, everything's gonna have to be right. And if not, we're gonna have to reuse these. Maybe the ranger saves the day. Maybe so, I mean, rangers usually do. Are you doing your homework, Law? High schooler, Law. Yeah, girl. I can get to the back side of this one with a hammer. You feel that crease right there, the high spot? Yeah. That, no, get your hand flat and feel <laughs> it. You don't feel like this. We're not typing here. Almost always when you have a big dent, it'll have a high spot around it. That's pretty wow. close right there. Pretty dry in there. Usually that's covered with grease. I think it's been a minute. Let's see what these bearings look like. Not too bad. Race looks pretty good. Squeeze is over here working on a masterpiece, so we can't look at it just yet. So now we're gonna put some bond on these dents. Ralphie's got them all ready, he tells me. You take your standard issue shopping cart here, put your plywood down, get your bondo can out. Put some of this out here. And you can use like a mixing stick or a paint stick, but we don't have one here. Why don't you put gloves on? Because I'm going to bet that you probably can't keep this off your hands. Kind of depends on the weather, how much hardener you put in this. You want to do a little less when it's hot or it's just going to completely dry up on you. In weather like this, 89 degrees, I'm not going to put as much as I normally would. But basically, the way I was taught it is you make a line across it. I have literally not touched Bondo <laughs> since I quit my auto body job. This is the first time in 14 months. And I touch Bondo every day for like 20 years. It almost feels weird to be touching it again. You want the edges to be smooth kind of. You don't want it like real thick out here where you don't need it. And like I said, don't stir this stuff. Fold it over the top of itself like this right here. So many of you guys have been waiting on me to do auto body stuff. And this is not the car I thought I'd be doing it on. <laughs> when we started this video, I didn't think we'd be doing Bondo in this car. But I just could not help myself. <laughs> so you want it all in even color. Good thing you put gloves on. Now put it on that dent right there. I'm not the best. Well, you've never done this before in your life, so. Like that. And then I kind of wipe it towards the middle like that. So the edges aren't so bad. Try that other one. No, we ain't got no dents in the concrete. <laughs> we'll be chipping it off there, won't we? So your dent comes all the way over to here. It's starting to harden up. Once it gets clumpy, you just gotta cut your losses and quit. See if we can make it back here before we go. So once again, I'm kind of taking it from the outside, pushing it towards the middle where the dent actually is. There you go, I like that. Trying to put that body line back in it. See these cracks down here? This is not really the right way to do it on the cracks, but it's the way we're gonna do it on this car. It's kind of like a car lock paint job. Really, with these cracks, you want to get down to good metal. We don't have the time frame to do that on this one. It didn't harden up on us before we got done. I like to take the rest of the bondo, get on one side of, the, of that, and stick it. And then it'll dry like that, and you can peel it off. There you go. Put That's you the right. basis of how to put it on there. You just want to make sure everything's sanded under there. How much did you get on your fingers? I got a little bit on that thumb there. <laughs> I know. That's why I figured you might do that. All right, let's do some other dents. That there's probably good. This whole area is pretty beat down through here. We'll just put it right in them rust holes. <laughs> it feels so wrong. It just feels wrong. Not the way I was trained for sure. The sooner you sand this stuff, after you put it on, once it's dry enough, the easier it is to sand. So the longer it sits here and dries, the harder it is to sand. So Mo wanted me to do a turtle, but you know, sometimes you gotta make budget cuts and improvise. So I made jellyfish instead. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Very good. Well, it just keeps pushing out. Oh, wow. We just keep putting it in. And you can put it right on top of the other Bondo you just did. No big deal to do that. You did really good on that, Ralph. That looks really good. So this is starting to dry out now. You don't want to sand it when it's still sticky to the touch. Like this doesn't stick to your fingers when you touch it. It's starting to feel hard now. Right now is the best time to sand it before it actually fully cures. Usually what I do is knock it down with like 80 grit on a DA, something fast just to get the shape of it. But I don't go all the way and I finish it out with a block. You don't want to see a real sharp ring around it or you've already sanded too much. It needs to look smooth around the edges. <laughs> Oh yeah, that looks really good. So you haven't sanded it too far yet because your edges look really nice there. So we probably need to start using a sanding block now. 
so he's been sanding on it a minute there and it has a really nice edge to it now we're a little low here and a little low there so we'll put a little bit more on it but you got it figured out there buddy that looks really good high five and we just ran out of 180 so i'm gonna have to go and get some 180 for us and i also talked to o'reilly's and they have the ranger rotors we're gonna see if they'll fit or not and my brake pads are in so i'm just gonna go do that before they close they're gonna be staying on this thing while i'm going to town i'll be right back it just don't feel right leaving all them there doing the body work while i'm going to town because there isn't five minutes experience with body work between all of them, but I guess this is as good a car as any to learn on. We'll see how good they do. And unless I go get some more sandpaper, we're never gonna get this thing done. Maybe they got good news for me in here. Well, no luck with the Ranger rotors working. The spacing is completely different on where the rotor sits. Aside from that, it looked pretty close though. You might can make it work if you did some crazy modifying or something, but probably be better off just to buy rotors or get a kit from somebody. So they did have some sandpaper and they had my brake pads. I guess we're gonna get home and see what we can do tonight. Almost Jeopardy. Let's see how this train wreck's been working out while I've been gone. I can see Squeezy's helping. Did you get it all straightened out? Is it good to go? Where's that mud hog at? Mud hog, you only got an air compressor. <laughs> hey, it's looking better. Look at this beauty. He thinks he's finished it. Feel it. All right, very nice, sir. Very nice. Good job. Oh, believe me. He's telling us all how to do it. We've all been instructed. Yeah, because he has all, all this auto body experience. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I was like, man, I'm leaving them with this and they have none of them done body work. <laughs> Look at that. She's keeping the body line there. Wawa, you're doing so good. I'm trying. What are you rayconing on me? What are you doing here? <laughs> you can't even, you probably can't even hear me. I can too. That looks a hundred times better than it did. I appreciate that. Rotors didn't work. What? So we're gonna have to use the old ones. Oh my gosh, are they gonna do something? Add Could the you like, what about it'll be, it'll be fine. Jay it'll be though. fine. We ain't driving on the road. We're just gonna have to use all rotors. It just ain't gonna be perfect. Just like the body work. I got you some more sandpaper. You, you gonna get put them body working arms to it. Yes, ma'am. This is a game changer. I know, right? I've already got it all. Yeah, that's a lot quicker than what sandpaper we have. Golly, boom, it's raking her off there. Yeah, it's I a ripper. I my darn self I you didn't go. I knew. Well, that's why I went and got you some more sandpaper. I should've took a break. clean all this old junk off here you don't want any grit inside of your grease even though this thing ain't going to be out in the road we still want our bearings to be lubricated and they were not very well lubricated before i'm gonna put some grease on all this give it the best chance of living if this don't work good we may eventually have to do something different with the rotors we got our bearings packed there so you tighten it down and back it up you don't want this too tight i like to rotate the rotor while you're doing it we got a new cotter pin in there because the old one looks like garbage. There you go. Got a new hose on there, new caliper, new brake pads. Look how narrow that is. That's so dainty. I know. It's probably the most narrow brake pads I've seen. So this should sit right in there like that. Got a new little wedge. can go in here. Our new bolt can go right here. And that caliper shouldn't go anywhere now. I can't find that glove. And sweat. Oh, gross. It's so pruney. Uh... That's the pruniest hands I've ever seen there, Papa. <laughs> right, we'll slide back and forth freely. Center itself, which is what it's supposed to do. We hook this hose up, and we'll have this side done. Woo woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah, that broke it completely loose. Man, heat wins every time, don't it? It does really help. It's better than anything else you can use. There it goes. So we're gonna leave these unhooked until we flush this line out with new brake fluid and then we'll hook them up at the end. Well, I went ahead and got this side done while they were sanding the rest of the car. At least if this YouTube thing don't work out, I can always work at Butch's brake shop, you know? I couldn't tell you how many cars I put brakes on in the last couple years. You ought to be good at it. Yeah, you're right. I ought to by now. I'm going to put some brake fluid in it and let it kind of gravity drain out those lines there. It don't really fit, does it? It looks a little too nice for this car. we got to eventually get some good looking hoops on this thing. 
Wish we had the budget for that right now, but we just don't. Maybe we can steal off something else. We might steal something, yeah. I think it's good enough for who it's for. Mm. But Lost Man says it's not, so he's gonna touch up that. I think these two look good. My masterpieces. This is just an art piece. <laughs> is that the Mona Lisa? Yeah. That one looks pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. This is that fan mail break foot. It, it stops better than normal break foot, don't it? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, another day has come and gone. We're putting the hours in on this one, putting the effort in. I hadn't originally planned to prime this whole thing, but I think I'm gonna prime the whole car now. The whole car? Yeah, probably gonna prime the whole thing. So we will see you guys tomorrow, and maybe we can get this thing to the primer stage. Well, we were walking out the door and this thing started dripping black brake fluid out. Oh yeah, it's starting to come out clear now. I'm gonna put this line on before we go out. So it was at this point in the video, our engine got back from the machine shop. We spent a couple days working on assembling the engine. So we did everything we could to the engine with what we had. And now we're back to try to finish up our brakes and our body work. It's now 12 days until cleansing cars. Ooh, what was that one called? Nacho plan. We getting some pedal already? Oh yeah, I can't even reach the floor anymore. All right, hold it down. Oh yeah, a lot of fluid. We're getting pretty much straight fluid on this side now. <laughs> what happened? I was sitting right here and I was holding on to the steering wheel. <laughs> it oh. fell off? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need you to reinstall that, okay? That's hilarious. He is a dick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you see that brown? Mm. That's with it dripping out. Yeah, that's coming out clear now. Does it feel good, bud? Look at the fluid that came out of it. How brown that is. It has a good feel. It doesn't just like go straight as a brick, you know? That'll make this car about a million times easier to move around. Yeah, for sure. Having brakes, even if you don't have engine transmission, if you can roll one off a hill and actually stop it with the brakes, it makes it so much easier. Back to body work. Now what are you arting on, Squiz? Jeez. Looking good. I guess we should try the brakes out, huh? Yeah. All right, hit it, Ralph. Oh, Lord. It stopped like crazy, didn't it? Yeah. Hit him. Man, that's all we need. So we're gonna keep fixing on some of these dents. We're just knocking them down with 80 grit. I know I'm gonna have to put some more bond on some of these places, but the kids have basically sanded the whole car now. It should be pretty much all sanded and ready to go, except for under the hood here. We actually watched Cars 2 last night, didn't we? Oh, yeah. And the orange gremlin is called Grim. He's a bad guy. So we got a bad gremlin. I think I got this good enough. We ain't getting no more feathers than that. Oh man, that's looking that's good. That does look pretty good. Yeah, a little bit of a high place here, I can feel. That's what I was thinking. And this right here needs a little more sanding, but that feels way better than it did. You're getting this stuff figured out, ain't you? So we're probably just going to set the time lapse up and sand our hearts away here. It's just more of the same just over and over again. We sand it down. Let's try to get the dust out of these pinholes. They really show up then, don't they? As you can tell, when you blow that off, it really shows all your pinholes there. What we're gonna do is take some Bondo, put in all those pinholes. We're just gonna put it on as thin as possible, try to only put it in the holes. We got a little bit of a low place here and here. We got some pinholes there we probably won't worry about. We gotta re-Bondo a couple spots here. We haven't sanded that side yet, but I'm gonna put some Bondo on this and we'll start sanding the other side. You just wanna put a lot of pressure. If you just have some really tiny ones, you can take a razor blade and Use it as a spreader. You really don't want to coat the whole thing. You just want a thin, thin coat, just enough to fill in your pinholes. That's cool. You don't want to give it the old Jeffrey Allen sheetrock mud trick. The smoother you put the Bondo on, the less you have to sand later. This is the stuff we just put on the, oh, the car. It's already like, it won't like stick to your fingers. And feel how hard it is. I was like it came out of the oven. She's such a fan hog. Wind tunnel testing.
Well, after hours and hours of sanding and bondoing and sanding and bondoing, I think the bodywork side of it is done enough for who it's for. You can see we kind of bondoed in the tail light there, kind of French the tail light in a little bit. Everything's pretty smooth. It's definitely not up to my standards. It's all finished out with 80 grit, which is really too rough to prime over, in my opinion. It's gonna look a lot better than what it did. Mom took the back bumper off. Me and her took the back glass out because they were just gonna be really in the way. But Ralphie has really surprised me with his dent fixing abilities for someone with zero experience doing it. But he's got these dents looking really good. He's worked on. I got the body line back in this. It's funny how all this started out, we weren't gonna do any body work on it at all. We're just gonna sand the car down. And, yeah, and then of course, me being me, we end up doing all this body work. So what we gotta do now is prime this thing. We gotta tape it up actually and then prime it. And before all that happens, I have to have a working air compressor that's and bigger than this little field. dingle dot one. Yeah, Mike's out of town for three weeks, so I'm gonna have to finish plumbing it in outside myself and wiring it. I guess we're gonna call it a day and we will see you guys tomorrow. Check us out on other platforms at sleeperdude88. Next day, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna work on the air compressor, getting it plumbed, and they are gonna work on getting all the dust off this car and taping all the glass and trim and all the things up. But basically we got our old paper machine here from where I worked at the body shop. That really speeds up the process for sure. We got a couple rolls of tape. We'll probably just put trash bags over the casings. We're gonna try to get the same primer today. So mom's wiping everything down with paint thinner here just to get all the dust and grease and oil and everything off of it. You wanna give it the best chance possible to stick. All right, I'm leaving y'all with it. Right. I'm gonna get your air compressor working, hopefully. So here's what I gotta do. I gotta wire this compressor in and I've gotta make this go to that dryer and into this big, huge line here. So I've dumped out every fitting I own. And I went to Lowe's this morning and ended up getting two air hoses and a bunch of fittings because we're gonna have to temporarily do this because the way I need to do it, I'm probably gonna have to order stuff online because they don't have it at Lowe's. So we're just gonna temporarily do it. And then Mike the neighbor's gonna finish it up when he gets back in town, I guess. What you working on, Squeeze? A pond. Digging a pond? What are you going to put in your pond? Fish and rocks. Okay. Well, I think I got it, honey. That looks like some Dr. Seuss something. Mike's going to be so disappointed, isn't he? He is. Air comes out of here. Air hose wraps around all that. Goes into the dryer. Comes out of the dryer. Cools up on the floor goes into this reducer, into that reducer, into that reducer, to that size. It goes from three quarter inch pipe thread all the way down to quarter inch. It's just a mess, because you got quarter inch pipe, half inch pipe, three eighths pipe, half inch pipe. So we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna use these air hoses inside the shop once we're done, but for now, this is just gonna get us through the day. You guys get the car taped up? Pretty much, just got a little bit more and we'll be done. Why don't y'all go flip the breaker and we'll see if this works. Okay. I wonder how loud it is inside. Right, let's go see if it works. Ooh. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's super quiet. You can barely hear it in here. We got to anchor it down at some point. It's going to walk off on its own. Okay, well, let's get some air hoses stretched out here. What's your favorite part so far of body work? The bondo. You like it the best? Yeah. You got the hang of it quick for a twerp. <laughs> well, since I'm not going to take the time to anchor this thing down today, I figured I'd come out here and put a seat belt around this thing so it doesn't fall off the back of the shop while I'm spraying that. Make me feel better anyway. Hey, Mike did a good job. This thing's got like 20 different junctions in the shop and nothing's leaking. How's the pond coming? Doing pretty good. Okay. Looking nice. We're going to be swimming in it soon, aren't we? Yeah. Rocky must be in the barn because it's so darn hot out here. I hadn't seen him all day. We have that external dryer you saw, the orange one. The old one we used to have on the compressor, I put in here, so we have a second dryer. And I also bought this while I was at Lowe's, so it's a water separator. It has a valve stem core, just like a casing does, and that's what drains the water out of the system. And you might ask yourself, why do I have a 90 degree fitting on there? What does he know that I don't know? Well, that's just all I had to hook this up to because Lowe's didn't have any paint gun regulators. This is the only fitting I had that would adapt the two. So let's see if this blows up in my face or not. You gotta get the air pressure right. So this will make a wide pattern. And this will narrow it down. Feel it. Watch. Feel it widen out. This is your air pressure, which usually people have a regulator down here like I have. And this is how much paint comes out. So tighten this in, it'll let less paint out. It won't let the needle go all the back. So right now we have it set up for maximum flow. 
as far as paint, it's all the way back. I guess we're ready as we're ever gonna be to spray this. We're actually gonna have to wait a little bit though, because if you look out here, it's 96 degrees in direct sunlight. And I just read the can and it says, do not spray it in direct sunlight or above mm. 90 degrees. And we can't spray it in here because we'd overspray the whole building probably doing that. We don't have a paint booth. So my plan is when the sun starts going down, we'll roll it out here and paint it out here when it's not so hot and not direct sun. Well, I guess while we're waiting on the weather to change, I'm gonna try to put this seat in. We got just the cheapest seat we could get from Summit Racing. I thought it would have like holes and stuff. I even bought the bracket kit. It don't even have any holes. So I gotta drill everything myself. It's only 16 inches wide, so we may have to butter up my hips to get in this thing. I got about 19 and a half inches of width there, and I kind of like to sit leaning back with that gangster lean anyway. So I'll probably lean it back just a little bit. I like to sit pretty far back in the car. I guess I'm going to just drill some holes and hope for the best on this, and we'll figure it out. Where have y'all been? You think you got to like eat and drink and get in cooler weather or something? We do merch orders. You mean we have a website that sells merch to us? Yeah. TheSleeperDude.com. Check it out, Ralphie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Already got the Simpson harness in it and the racing seat. Probably Easy on the steering wheel. Yeah, we're going to have to put it on the steering wheel oh. for sure. For sure. Looks good. It fits nicely in there. I was actually able to bolt the seat belts right to the factory seat belt bolt holes. Good. And I just had to drill the holes for the seat because it had no holes at all. Looking good, bud. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I like that harness better than the old style that has the latch that goes over. You got to get all of them in at the same time. I just love those cam lock ones like that. I have an idea. What if we put a coat of primer on out there, pulled it inside out of the sun, then pushed it back out for the next coat? You know, you could do that, and that way it wouldn't be in the direct sun the whole time. I'm just worried about doing it, like, in the night, because what if you turn these lights on and bugs are all over it, you know? Yeah, well, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm using a paint gun I've never used before. I'm using primer I've never used before. And we're doing it out in the sun like it's not supposed to be done, even though we have kind of weighed a little bit. It's still 95 degrees. Okay. It doesn't even say on the can how many coats or how long to wait in between coats. It just says... You're supposed to wait 24 hours before you paint it. That's the only thing we know for sure. According to the label, this is enamel primer. So it's going to be great. Okay. We don't even have a paint stick to start with. But Ralphie found this piece of metal. So we're good. Oh, it's thick in the bottom. Real thick. See, guys, we're taking the risk so you don't have to. Is this going to work out? We don't even know. We don't have any idea if it's going to work out. No man knoweth. See, if it does work out, hey, you guys know a cheap option to paint a car. If it doesn't work out, then I wasted the money and you didn't. So this mix is eight to one because it takes one pint of reducer for a whole gallon of primer. So we're not going to dump this in there. We don't know how much primer we're going to use. We may need it for the next one. One, two, three. We're going to go to this three right here. Here we go. Right, get it off the can. Ready? Go. There you go. I knew it'd probably good with that. Oh, yeah. We planned that one out. So we're at three here. So if we bring this up to three with the reducer, it'll be eight to one ratio. So right there. All right, start that up, Ralphie. That's watery. Yeah, it's kind of thin, which is, I mean, that's good to go through the gun. It needs to be kind of thin. Yeah. I bought me a brand new respirator. A lot of people don't do it, but what you're supposed to do with these is keep them in a plastic bag when you're not spraying with them. Because the filters in there are constantly absorbing stuff out of the atmosphere and they just go bad from just sitting out, so. There's only so many hours they'll work for. It's kind of thicker in the bottom. We may not stir it up enough. All right, here we go. I guess I'm going to spray the sunny side first, huh? Before it gets too hot. It's not spraying that great. It's like it's not putting out enough material. I'm having to go way too slow. It does look better, huh? Oh, yeah. Looks better like that.
He makes his stuff look so easy. Yeah, like, it's incredible. That does look really good. Mm -hmm. It looked better than what it did, that's for sure, huh? Yeah. Yeah, even this will look a lot better. All right. Oh, oh! Hey, Lord. There's a mess. Ralphie, Ralphie, Ralphie! <laughs> I got singles all over. I'm surprised I didn't come out and put that bag down there. Better him than us. Exactly. <laughs> it's spraying better now. Well, maybe it was it just... It may have been a little thick in the bottom. Clogged up yeah. or something. It looks like I'll smash in the head in the back. <laughs> Thank you for taking care of me. You should try it. Here. Let me wipe my sweat out of it first. Mm -hmm. Pour the sweat out of it. First time using a spray gun. We'll see how this works. Start, you know, one end or the other. And don't spray where I've already sprayed. You already need to be moving when you pull the trigger. So start out here and pull the trigger when you get about there. Uh -huh. Look at what you're doing. See how it's dry? That needs more. So start way over here and then slow down. It's a little weird to get used to, huh? Yeah. You did good though. Do you think you can go mix some more primer? A full cup will do half this car. You want to spray it like you want it to look shiny. That fender looks way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't you spray the front stuff there, Ralphie? He's a body man, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be telling you how to do oh, this from now Believe on me, out. he was already telling me how to tape it up and how to sand it, so. I hear you. <laughs> I like that lower balance. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. Let us know in the comments what the front end is, because I know the front end don't match the car correctly. So much for rolling in and out because it's already dry. I was going to say, it looks like I it's... might as well just hammer down, I guess. How many layers does it take? What? Usually three coats. Yeah. Yeah. I might skip, skip one on this one. So usually the first coat is soaking really bad into the bondo. Mm-hmm, I've seen that doing that. Yeah. It's a little different. I thought it was wet and dry and weird. So I'm doing this and Dad's in there working too. Filming two videos on this car at once. A lot going on in the background here. I wonder how easy this stuff is to sand. Mm. That's what I'm wondering about. Oh, no. Are you going to sand it? Yes, you got to sand it. Always. The whole car. Just blew his mind. It's about the same color as our building. <laughs> No. Have no. you ever run a spray gun before? I don't, I'm not good at You got this. You got this, Mom. You got this, Mom. You can spray paint. I've seen it. Oh. Hi, hi, hi. This ain't spray paint. We don't go back and forth. Just go one direction with it. One direction with it. There you go. There you go. Look at you go. You thought you couldn't do it. Oh, no. She's getting carried away now. Good job, Mom. Thank you. Well, that's two coats there. It really looks better than I thought it was as far as the primer. I can still see it soaking into the Bondo there. Probably should put another coat on it, I would think. Not bad, guys. I mean, considering how rough this thing was and how little time we spent doing body work on it. I'm proudest of my fender here. Well, I should say Wawa my fender here. She did good on it. Yeah, she's sick today, guys. She was sick yesterday. Let's do one more coat. We'll be done. It looks way better than I thought. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about it now. I'm Is it impeccable? Impeccable. You like what? it? Sure. It's going to Barbie paint you like that. Looks beautiful. Incredible. Impeccable. Mom, let me see them teeth. <laughs>
I think that's good enough. Three cool. coats. It's still soaking in though. Look over there. Should be fine. I will get it with a paint. Let's push it in before it gets too much sun exposure. I'm hot. You sweaty. You drip sweating. I know. It's been a long time since I've had a paint gun in my hand. So any surprises about this process? It's not like spray painting at all. Not at all like spray painting. <laughs> Mom was doing it though. She was going back and forth. I was like, no, no, no. You don't go back and forth with it. What do you think, Squeeze? It turned out pretty good, huh? Yeah. Ralphie noticed the cracks I was telling him about over here. So you can see some of the cracks in here. Well, it kind of filled them in a little. Problem with filling things in with primer is if you fill things in with primer, it dries back out later and you'll see it in the future. You have to get it in your body work. You can't rely on primer to fix your problems. We got to let this dry for 24 hours. We don't want to untape it because then we'd have to tape it up again. That like, takes forever. It's like eight hours sleep or do time. Though. Yeah, if anything says has to dry 24 hours, all that means is the next day. We just got to go over it, sand this thing with like 320 and then she'll be ready to spray. It's hard for me to do this way because I'm used to doing it for a living and professionally. So I see all the defects in it, but it does look a lot better than what it did for sure. It's like almost Jeopardy time. So we will see you guys tomorrow and we'll start sanding this thing. Look at them ears. So Tosh has been bottle feeding this. This is her daddy's calf. But it thinks everything is a bottle now. Literally everything. <laughs> His poor mama died and she's been bottle feeding it and taking care of it. Hey, Granny, we hadn't even seen you yet. What are you doing? Oh gosh, here we go. Getting the phone sniff. There we go. Rocky's over there hi-hatting us. Rocky, come here, buddy. <laughs> He's like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing. Next day, Wawa's not sick anymore. She has not seen the car. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. Look at that. Look how smooth that's it is now. What in the world? We're back to saying this thing. It has definitely been 24 hours. I've been working on engine things and transmission things while this has been drying today. We are back to try to get the primer sanded and get the same red spray. And we still don't have paint hardener. Maybe we can get it sprayed tonight. Hey, look at your fender you worked on. Would you just look at it? Would you just look at it? Look well, at that. They're not going to give you any Oh, look at that. Hey, and we have another big announcement. What's the big announcement? Oh, brace face. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Ralphie got braces today. So mom was a brace face. I was a brace face. Now nah, he's a brace face. It. Yep. No brace face over here yet. Yeah, it's not super dry, even though it's been the next day. I left it sitting out in the sun today, but look, while I put her arm on it, her bracelet like put marks in it. And I noticed there's like some drips from the primer gun on the roof. And when I touch them, they're super gummy right there. So not best case scenario, but we're gonna see how it sands. Hopefully it won't instantly gum up our sandpaper. The kids are gonna go over it with sanding blocks here. I'm gonna try to go over it with electric sander. Maybe we can get this thing knocked out of here. Well, we've been sanding and sanding and sanding on this thing forever now. It's not sanding well. See how it's filling up our sandpaper basically immediately. So it's really hard to get the texture out of it because it's so gummy still that it's just filling up our paper before it does it. We basically got the whole thing sanded now. It's just still got texture to it, which will show up in the paint. Really with primer, you want to give it as much time to dry as possible. So the longer it dries, the better because that allows it to soak in, harden up. I mean, if I was building a show car, I'd let it dry for weeks, maybe months. Oh, wow. I think it's pretty close to being ready for paint right now. We're going to sand on a little bit more, but that's probably about all it's going to get. We're going to run over this engine bay with a red scotch bright. We didn't do that before we primed it because I didn't really plan on priming the engine bay. But I'll probably spray some orange paint in there while we're doing this just to make it all uniform. I'm looking for some tractor paint hardener. Yep, I'll be there to get it. Thank you. They have one left. They're going to put it at the counter for me. So our local store here, I have went two times and called once to get the hardener for this paint. My mother-in-law stopped by the nearest one south of us. They said they had seven of them, and when she got there, they had none. She just called another store that's west of us, the closest one west of us. They said they have one left, and they're going to hold it for you? That's what they said. All right, well, let's go get our hardener. Go save the day. Maybe we can get this thing painted. I can't believe it's that hard to get hardener. Me and the kids are just going to keep trying to sand on this thing, get as much texture as we can. You can see here how the texture's still in it. We're about to the bottom of our roll, though, of sandpaper, aren't we? Try to get it completely ready for her when she gets back. Oh, 
Well, we got it all sanded best we can. We absolutely ran out of 320 sandpaper. Ralphie's gonna blow it off. We're gonna wipe it down, wait for mom to get here, and we'll spray it. Woo! You really need to run over it with a, what they call a tack cloth, which I don't even have one here. But it's just like a gummy rag that kind of feels like it has honey on it to get all the dust particles off there. If you were painting this like in a paint booth and doing a professional job, you definitely want to run over it with a tack cloth. Ain't nobody got time for that. Exactly. And when you wipe the car down like this, it shows you what it's going to look like when it's painted. So you see that texture there, or you see a run or a dent or whatever, it's going to look just like that when you paint it. Squeezy, we scored. They had some. The mm -hmm. only bottle yeah. within a 50 mile range, and we got it. <laughs> hey, check your... He's so stupid. <laughs> My face is probably shaking more than Oh, that's so funny. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Stupid. And that is the only one. Like, they didn't have another one. I already got another well, one. Well, perfect timing because it's about to be dark. We haven't seen the color in the can like this, so I think it's going to be pretty bright. Boom. Whoa. Wow, that's incredible. Wow. <laughs> Dang, old son. The reason for the hardener is this makes it shiny and keeps it shiny longer. You better double it up. I don't think it's gonna take too many coats as thick as this stuff looks. It's good. So this one is eight to one and then half apart. We're gonna have to split the middle on that one. All right, there you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there goes all our instructions. We're gonna have a bright yellow pinto and a bright orange gremlin. What could be better? That should be about right. Half a part of this. I like this color now. You like it? I think it's gonna look epic. It's kind of thick, isn't it? Hopefully it'll spray it out of his gun. That's incredible. Wow. It's gonna look so good. I think I'll see us coming. <laughs> I thought it was a stop sign when it first came out I here. thought it was a stop. <laughs> stop signs are red. This is this orange. This is the same thing. It is not at all. Yes, it is. Like in the middle of that roof, you want to keep it wet. You don't want to spray it to there and then paint a bunch of other stuff and come back to it. You watching? Here we go. No. You gotta go up this one, right? No, to a half. It's really not spraying like I want to. It's like the paint's too thick. We may have to over reduce the next coat just to make it spray better, but it's just spraying really rough. I think the tip size on this gun may be a little small for it possibly. You gonna paint the engine bay? Is it a lot different than rattle can in it? Yeah, it's a lot different than rattle can in it. He says you need to let it dry before you put the next coat on it. You're not supposed to put it on wet on wet. We'll let it dry a little bit here and I'll put a second coat. I think it's only gonna take two coats. That's good. It covers pretty good. So this is the money coat here. With a paint like this, I had an old timer tell me a long time ago, you gotta spray it how you want it to look. So if you see dry in it, or if you see whatever, you gotta get it right then because it's how it's gonna look. So it's a little easier when you're doing base clear coat because the clear coat can kind of fix some problems. That's really what I'm used to. I'm not used to spraying this at all. I'll try to do my best though, but it's already getting bugs in it. I know that. A lot of bugs getting in there and doing the backstroke. Well, I think that's as good as it's going to get. It kind of looks like Little Grim, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't instantly say Kubota Tractor to me, though. Mm -hmm. Is this two horsepower? Yeah. Go down. Yeah. <laughs> wow.
It looks brighter in here. She bright. Golly, it is, isn't it? Neon. It's pretty shiny. I tried to spray it wet. She's a beaut, Clark. It definitely would have been slicker if we would have been able to sand the primer down smoother. I mean, that's not bad for $44 paint, you know? Looks a lot better than it did. Mom over here going the extra mile, pulling bugs out with tweezers. I don't know what the deal is. Bugs just love that smell. Well, I'm happy with it. It's you know, great. considering what we spent in just a couple days and counting everything, maybe $100-ish materials, you know? I like the orange. It does look like the car from the movie, though. You know, if it had that black stripe on there, she'll stand out, won't she? With that color. Stand out like Ralph's braces. 3X Zoom, hit them with it. <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to run easily. Like some paints will run off the floor with you. Oh, she's thick. We even over reduced it and it still was kind of thick coming out. But don't get too close. I'm a little worried about it. I'm glad Squeezy already slinked out because yeah, she, she ran into it when it was wet primer already. Out. Well, all we can do now is wait. It's got to dry. We're doing engine transmission things in the background while we're doing this. So we will see you guys tomorrow after this dries and see what she looks like. That's funny. You can see exactly where we painted this thing out here. Even more of the casings was. Next day, kids are at school. Feels dry. I was a little bit worried about it drying, but I guess that catalyst really helps because the primer didn't dry that great. I almost wonder if you put the catalyst in the primer, if that would help. On the back of the thing, it doesn't even say you can use it. It just says oh. reducer only. So I'd be tempted to try the catalyst in it to see if you At have- At least a little shot of it. Yeah, just try it. We're hoping it's dry enough now for me to tape these stripes out on it. We really want it to look like the car from Cars 2. So it has the Gremlin X stripe down the side. I guess I'm just gonna freehand these things and we'll see how it turns out. I think the kids will be excited to see it with the stripes on it and everything. Yeah. Hey, I Donald Trump my foot yesterday and didn't know it. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Did you really say Donald Trump? Yeah, I Donald Trump my foot. I got that spray tan now. I didn't even notice it till late last night. I had already took a shower and I'm like, my foot looks dirty still. And I had spray tan myself. It's crazy. Hopefully we don't mess this whole car up right here because I have seen tape imprint on paint or pull the paint off. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. I did a little test spot underneath the hood. It seems to be okay. Well, just barely stick her down. Well, one tip I got for you. Pull your tape off, wrap it around you like this on your shirt and it gets the fuzzies off your shirt and it don't stick too good anymore. And that makes it stick to the paint less. Looking at the pictures from the cars maybe, the stripe goes right down the center of this door handle. So that's what I'm gonna do. Probably go a little bit bigger than the door handle. So I'll try to angle it down just a little bit because it's gonna have to come to a point up here. So this actually curves. I'm trying to follow this body line down. I'm trying to push it down too hard, huh? Yeah. Now she's going to be a certified racing car. Bonafide. It looked like the stripe did not come to a tip like this. It was like squared off at the front. So I guess we're going to do something like that right there. It comes up this way. I'm trying to decide what to do because theirs is kind of pinstriped around this. And I don't have time nor the ability to do that. Should I end it off here or here? I'll do it at the top of them. That's fine. That's what you want to do anyway, wasn't it? Can I make this curve? This big wide tape. You can do it. I think this is the only car I've ever painted of mine that wasn't blue. It's gonna be so cool. You think so? I'm excited now. Because <laughs> of the stripe? I know, it's crazy, isn't it? I always like cars with like two colors. You gotta break it up a little bit, huh? Yeah, I don't like a solid color car that much. I think I'm gonna have to use the thinner tape there to make that curve. These curves like this are harder because it wants to bunch up the tape. I really need a thinner tape than this, honestly, to do it. Look at you. You the man. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it so the tape don't stand there long. Yeah, the other side. okay, that's a good idea. The wind's messing me up. I'm blowing my paper everywhere. Let me red scotch right that just so it has a little bit of adhesion and we'll spray it. I'm mixing up paint, you need any? <laughs> Classic body shop joke right there. All right, let's see how it goes. Now this is enamel paint on top of enamel paint. In theory, we should be good to go. Some old engine paint from some engine I painted. I'm gonna just do it really lightly at first in case we have some sort of reaction. You really don't wanna hammer your first coat on anything. In between coats on that side, I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. That way, if we ruin it, we ruin both sides equally. Oh my goodness, you're so bright today. It 
does say you're supposed to wait 24 hours before you top coat it anymore, but I mean, it's the next day. That's the same. We've got three coats on this side. Hopefully we don't pull any paint off right here. Looking good. <laughs> awesome. So good. Woo! Oh, I like that. I'm yeah. not up that high. Yeah, it looks cool. Well, it works. Let me get this other side paint one and tape it. Awesome. Kids are going to be so excited. I'm taping it while it's still wet. I'm just glad the tape didn't mess it up. I was a little worried about that one. You definitely wouldn't want to leave this taped up for a long time, sitting out in the weather or something. Right. Well, did I get them uniform side to side, you think? I can't see them both side to side, so I don't know. Exactly. I guess we can untape the whole car, huh? Let's do it. Yeah, let's untape it. See if Ralphie's tape job would do good, huh? Uh, I know there's some on some of these weather strips here. Right. But you know what? There was already some on there, so. There was from the last paint job. Can't feel too bad about it. Bam, look at that. Man, we cleaned some of the old primer overspray off the windows from the last primer job somebody did on it. For a dirt cheap paint job, this thing looks pretty good. The glass is actually in pretty good shape once we cleaned it up. I'm happy with how it turned out. It honestly turned out better than I thought it would because originally I hadn't even planned on doing bodywork to it. It's gonna be awesome to see the engine down in this thing when we get it all together. As of today, we have nine days left till Cletus and cars. Me and Tosh turn around and look where Scooter's at. He is up in the quarter glass of this galaxy wagon. Determined he's found something to kill. Get it, Scooter, get it, get it. I'm gonna have to get floor pans in this thing so he can't climb up to the bottom. <laughs> Ralphie's home now. The girls are at Nerd Squad or whatever, so they're not home yet, but. Wow. What do you think? That is incredible. You like it? Impeccable, yes. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Was it like too mushy to? No, touch it, give it a touch. Oh. It's hard now, isn't it? It dried up good. I thought you would like it. Yeah. I thought you it would. It's better that stripe, don't it? Oh, yeah. It's just spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a lot like the car from Cars 2, doesn't it? Yeah, grim. Yeah, with the stripes and stuff. Impeccable. I guess when your sisters get home from Nerd Squad, we'll show them. Yeah, I love how it turned out. I think the stripe helps it out a lot. Oh, yeah. On how it looks. And it makes it go faster. Yeah, it obviously adds horsepower, too. That's scientifically proven. Okay, the girls are back from Nerd Squad. So. <laughs> How dare you? Ooh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I'm not looking at the stripes. You like the stripe? It looks like Grim, huh? Better, it does. It looks better like that. I think it looks good either way, but that's. That's racy. Ooh. You should sit down in it. You haven't sat in it yet, have you? You didn't see the seat? No. You were sick that day, weren't you? Oh, yeah, sick. Oh, come around here and sit in it. It looks so good. You like it better with the stripe? I like it with the stripe. I think it gives it more character. Well, this is weird. <laughs> You're a race car driver now. For real. We're gonna have to leave the back seat in it, right? Yeah, you want. Oh, Ralph has got to get in there. Maybe one day, guys, you can drive it. Well, guys, thanks for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Uh, I feel like it turned out great for the money we spent. Depending on how much body work you had to do or primer work, kind of depends on how much it would cost you, but the paint itself is only $44 a gallon. I think the reducer and the catalyst adds another like 30 bucks to it. So you could essentially just paint one if you didn't have to do any body work for like 70 bucks, something like that. Not too bad, huh? I gotta pour in the trash can? Yes, you gotta pour in the trash can. Oh my gosh, she's got two fancy eyes. It ain't fancy nothing. She done forgot her raisin. Please. Man, we are under the gun as of the time this is ending, which like I said, we've been filming two videos at the same time. So we've been doing a, an engine and transmission build for this thing at the same time that we've been doing the body and paint. As of right now, we have nine days left until Cleese and Cars Bristol. We are under the gun. We have definitely got to get this engine and transmission there. But that will be the next video you see is us building the engine and transmission for this car. It's rowdy, let me just say. We hope it's rowdy. It's real rowdy. 
It's definitely going to be a big step up in our game over what we have with the Malibu. We hope to be a better performance in the yeah. Malibu. As of right now, I've got nine days to plumb this car, wire this car, put the engine transmission, do motor mount, transmission mount, the whole cooling system, make a drive shaft for it. We got a lot to do. Rear end, you got to set my rear end. Right, you always got to do something to your rear end. I don't know if it's going to work out or not. We're going to do our best. We have been working non-stop on this thing. Our merch is now available at thesleepwithnew.com. We appreciate everybody buying shirts lately and stickers. It really helps out. We got everything from youth small to 5X when it's in stock. I've been trying to keep stuff in stock, but uh, you guys have been buying it pretty fast. We also have the Sleeper Dude Fairmont Wagon sticker, $4.99 with free shipping. We also do international sales as well. But you can check our second channel out. Sleeper Dude 2. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleeper Dude 88. I hope you think we did a good job turning this thing into Grim off Cars 2. We tried our best. Hey, and we did the brakes. I almost forgot we did the brakes. Yeah. That wasn't too expensive either. The, the calipers were not very expensive. Brakes seem to be working good. We haven't drove it yet. Big thank you to Holly for their help with our channel. We really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without them. We're also gonna try to get this thing to Mo Party if it survives pleasing cars. That'd be fun. So we're excited about going to Mo Party, so come on out and check that. We gotta go see Rocky. He has barely been in this video. There's three left. Three? Man, he's gonna like that. Oh, we got the big baby in here. <laughs> we got the big baby. And he thinks everything is a bottle. Yeah, this yeah. is gonna be interesting. What are you doing, ears? Wild Bill, what are you doing? Look, he's licking his lips already. We ain't got no bottles for you, honey. Not yet. There you go. Look at that three. Where's Granny Gran? There she is, look. There she comes. She didn't hear us, but she saw us. Come on, Granny. You want some? What's the, what's the universal symbol? There yeah, we go. Yeah, you gotta give her the oh, hand. Oh, she got the gallop when I did that. Come on. There you go. Oh, what was that? Is that you good? leaving me out. I didn't leave you out. I wouldn't forget you. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ralphie, come look at this. Oh, no. Look right at it. <laughs> oh, there's Fowler. Yeah. Oh, hi, baby. Cool, baby. He's going back up on his casing. He thinks you had the bottle. You had a bottle? RC Cola? Hi, baby. Look, here's your mom over here. Come on. <laughs> hi, baby. Hey. You're okay. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, there's no milk in that. I don't, nope. I don't got nothing. No, I ain't got no fingers You're either. You're okay. Wayne. That is a bag. She says, I wish you made it off video more often. <laughs> she bit the metal. <laughs> he says, mama, mama, mama. He's got your phone. He's got your phone. You better run. <laughs> You better go. You better go. She'll be back in a little bit to feed you. Oh, he's after you. And remember, Jesus says, enjoy yourself with your eyes. Woo! Woo!